The Panther was a German medium tank that entered service in 1943. It came about as a direct counter to the Soviet T-34, incorporating the sloped armour of the Red Army's brilliant tank, and it had excellent firepower in the 75mm KWK-42 L-70 gun. But reliability and mobility issues plagued the Panther, and it has been derided by some experts as over-engineered, unlike its cheaper Soviet rival. Indeed, it was not only over-designed, but took a long time to produce. The Soviets could churn out four to six T-34s in the time it took the Germans to build one Panther tank. Although problems and faults were progressively ironed out as different marks appeared, the Germans then found significant material shortages and also fuel shortages hampered the further development of the tank and also reduced crew training times, further undermining the Panther's impact on the battlefield with around 6,000 being built before the German surrender. But what many people don't realise is that Panther production continued in a very limited scale in the immediate post-war period. This is the story of those post-war Panthers, the last of their type. During the war, the Allies were very interested in the new Panther tank and were keen to acquire examples for testing. The British had to wait until early 1944 before getting their hands on a Panther Ausführung D, an example that had been captured by the Red Army and shipped to England. Trials commenced. The main gun was removed, but an engine fire ended trials early. However, during the fighting in Normandy following the D-Day landings, a captured Panther Ausführung A was shipped to England for tests, and in October and November 1944, a Panther Ausführung G was shipped over and subjected to firing tests at Shubriness, a gunnery range in Essex in the east of England, the tank being wrecked in the process. All of these tests and evaluations were made to enable British forces to be able to find out how to knock out the Panther in combat. The British were also keen in studying the Panther's design and integrating any of its good features into their own new armoured vehicle designs. Two captured German Panther tanks served on operations in World War II with the British Army, one in Italy and one in the Netherlands and Germany. Do check out the videos I've made about these tanks in the end screen. As the British advanced into Germany in 1945 alongside the Americans and Canadians, many manufacturing plants were captured. In April 1945, at war's end, the British captured the city of Hanover, the centre of Panther tank production. The city area contained not one but three Panther tank and Jagdpanther tank destroyer assembly plants. All of the plants were in a terrible state following intense Allied air raids and had ceased production in late March 1945, and most of the workers, mostly foreign impressed labourers, had naturally disappeared at war's end. What was left were bomb-damaged plants full of partially completed vehicles or vehicle parts and a small German civilian workforce. Hanover was in the new British occupation zone of Germany, and in June the Panther plants were taken over by a British Army unit, the 823rd Armoured Troops Workshop, Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers, the RIMI. The RIMI, founded in 1942, provides engineering support to the British Army. Its specialists were ideal men to administer the Panther plants, and higher headquarters sent them in for a specific reason. The 823rd's commanding officer, Captain W.J. Hadlow, was ordered to construct as many Panthers and Jagdpanthers as he could from the available vehicles and parts. Captain Hadlow became the plant manager, and a British warrant officer the deputy manager, the latter actually refusing demobilisation at the end of the war so he could stay on and complete the work. The German system had worked like this. The tank components were completed at a factory at Latzen. They were then transferred to another facility at Linden, where the final new vehicles were completed and tested. Both facilities were subsidiaries of the firm MNH, headquartered in Hanover. The problem for Captain Hadlow was the final assembly plant at Linden. Due to air raid damage, one of the building roofs had collapsed, bringing down gantry cranes, and power was out. 
Hadlow could see that Linden was far too gone for production to recommence easily, so he ordered that all parts and partially built vehicles be scavenged from Linden and sent to the factory at Larsen, which was in much better shape and had power. With most of the original workforce gone, Hadlow instructed the German managers and foremen to put together a small all-German workforce, these men happy to be able to work in the post-war chaos and hardships of defeated Germany. Hadlow created a small assembly line at Latzen, and the works under Remy direction managed to piece together nine panthers and twelve Jagdpanthers. Each completed vehicle was tested by Remy drivers on a nearby heath. Hadlow's little factory used up all the available World War II parts by spring 1946. None of the vehicles was fitted with a hull machine gun, but interestingly each vehicle did receive a basic camouflage paint scheme, made directly onto the red primer, producing a striking effect. So proud was Captain Hadlow of his achievement that he had each panther or Jagdpanther fitted with a brass plaque that showed that it was British built by the Remy. The British used some of the new vehicles in tests, comparing them to the range of British tanks in service at the time. But what became steadily clear was that the German engines and transmissions were unreliable. By 1948, the British had labelled the Panther and Jagdpanther mechanically unreliable. But other tests were performed, and several Panthers and Jagdpanthers were kept at British armoured bases in Germany until the late 1940s. As they became surplus to requirements, these British-built German tanks were either scrapped or used for target practice. For example, the British A-39 Tortoise prototype super-heavy tank conducted live firing tests on a panther in Germany. A number of panthers were transported to Britain. One panther, number four, built by Hadlow's team, was sent to the scrapyard at Hardwick. This panther was eventually purchased by a man in Germany and restored to running condition. It was this very panther that was famously seized by German police from the collector's basement in 2015, the subject of one of my previous videos, link in the end screen. Other British-built panthers still survive today. An organisation called the Weald Foundation bought two wrecked Jagd panthers in 2000, one from an old gunnery range in Germany. This vehicle is a Remy built example. The restoration of the Remy Jagdpanther is ongoing. The best preserved Remy Panther is to be found today at the Tank Museum at Bovington. Panther number no. 6 was transferred by the British Army to the Shrivenham Defence Academy collection, surviving intact until transferred for display at the Tank Museum. There it joined a Jagdpanther also built by the Remy that is on display today. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon, details in the description box below.